So as you saw at the end of that drive, according to the temperature gauge, this was really, really hot, but we came out here and this was cold, like literally cold to the touch right here. And this over this end was hot, but cold all across now. The thermostat on this particular car is on the cold side of the radiator. The first thing the coolant meets after the radiator is the thermostat. So it's either a completely clogged thermostat or a clogged radiator. Since the thermostat's the easy one to check first, that's what we'll deal with. And we'll get rid of that thermostat and see if we get flow. All right, this is as close as I get to a lift. Certainly enough space under there to work. Well, let's get going. So that's our thermostat housing up in there. But right now, we've got a big old stone guard that we've got to get rid of. So it's just a few bolts there, there, there. Probably find some more as I go. I think there's some clips up the side here. So we'll get that off and then see what we're looking at. All right, so stone guard off. Here's our target right there. That's our thermostat housing, just that one there. So it's a nice, simple, easy one. We just have to uh, take a couple of bolts off, but what we might do is take one of these low hoses off. Let the system drain first. Um, that way we don't have a giant coolant shower whilst we're trying to pull that off. All right, the first thing we're gonna do since we're here and because the person helping me really, really, really wants to do this first, is we're gonna back flush the radiator and see how much flow we've got through the radiator and also go that way. So if there is flow, we'll start clearing it out. Okay. Okay, so the question is, do we have resistance at all? And we don't by the look of it. Looks like we got full flow. Yep. Put the cap on, so it has to go through the core. And there we go, we've got full flow backwards. No gunk coming out. So potentially, oh, maybe a little bit, I can feel. So I'd say the radiator's got flow, but look at that. Next one is the thermostat, and that's what we're really hoping it's going to be. All right, so here's our thermostat. Good news and bad news. Good news is it's not like completely caked with sealer, which is also good news for the rest of the system. Hopefully it's maybe not as bad in there as we feared. Um, but that means, you know, not sure if this is the problem. Uh, could have just failed. So what we're gonna do now is back flush the actual engine itself. Just check this good flow through the engine. Nothing funky going on in there. Can't imagine there is, but it's worth checking since we've got everything open. Then we'll put the new thermostat in. Um, might as well put it in if there's no gunk through the coolant and just see what happens. Okay, so here we go. We're just running coolant straight through the top hose, backwards through the motor. And obviously, no flow restriction there, so that's good. The other thing you want to do before you put everything back together is just clean both sides, both contacts on the thermostat housing. So the housing here and the motor side of it, just get all the gunk off it. So it all seals back in nicely. What we've actually decided to do quickly since we're here is we're going to, we've put the housing back on very lightly with no thermostat in it. We're gonna fill the system with water and just crank it. And then that way we should be able to just check the water pump is pumping. So once this system's full, when we turn it on, should just pump water straight out of the top hose here straight away because that thermostat's not in place. But right now we're filling it up. All right, so let's see if coolant comes out. Ah. That was a good sign. All right, so we're all buttoned up down here. We're all buttoned up up here. We've got our new thermostat in. We've got our burper ready to go. Um, there'll be a lot of air in the system, so we're just gonna feed it whilst we're here. We've got the hose ready as well. And fingers crossed, this could be the fix. Okay.
okay. Normally you'd have a bigger water reservoir and you could just let this volume go up and down, but we have to turn it off, let it suck it in, stop it from sucking air. Let it settle and do it again. So if you're doing this frequently, invest in a proper burping funnel. Okay, we're still getting a bit of air, but with all the burping we've done, the temperature hasn't moved off its proper range. So we're just gonna go drive it now. And I think it's got enough water in it that as it heats and cools and cycles, we should be able to get the last of the air to cycle out through the overflow the way it should. Well, here we are again. We took the car for a drive the other night and it behaved really well after doing all that stuff. For about half an hour, we had no issues. The cooling temperature stayed perfectly level. We gave it all kinds of load tests up and down really steep hills and stuff. Really good sign. We didn't get the heater back, so still a little bit of work to do there. But then suddenly after half an hour, it started to heat up again. So I'm hopeful maybe just some of that sealer stuff has broken free. So what we're thinking of doing today, we're gonna do a heater core flush, make sure the heater core is working, check the, uh, the valves and stuff are working and things like that since we're pulling everything apart again. And then what I might do is actually drop the thermostat out, just leave the seal in there and run it without a thermostat just to make sure that we're actually getting proper flow through there. I think, or I hope what might've happened is some of that stuff's dislodged under the load testing and just kind of clogged up the thermostat again. So we're gonna go in again, get rid of that thermostat and I'll show you how to back flush a heater core as well. So what we're looking for is two heater hoses or two coolant hoses running into the firewall of the car. And on this car, it's these two right here, those flex, flexi rubber hoses running into the back. Sorry, it's a bit blurry, but just back in there, one, two. So one going in and one coming out of the heater core and we can trace them back. We could either try and disconnect them there or we can trace them back and try and disconnect them down there as well. So we're gonna disconnect those. And the first thing I wanna do is just check that when we turn the heater on, we do get coolant flow out from the engine towards the heater core. Um, that tells us the valve's working, so we'll check that first and then it also tells us which is the inlet and which is the outlet for the heater core. Most likely the upper is the in and the lower is the out, but it's always good to know for sure. And then we'll very carefully run some water backwards through the system. So there we go, we've got the top radiator hose off of its plug back in there. Um, didn't get it on video, but when I did pop it off a whole bunch of brown gunk came out of it so that's a good sign and now what we're going to do we're just going to turn it on quickly with the heater on flat out just to check we've got some kind of flow uh, a good sign will be coolant coming out of that pipe right there you? yep <laughs> So now we've got both of them off and even though we didn't get huge flow that's not necessarily surprising given the cold motor but what we did confirm is water goes or coolant goes in that pipe and out that pipe and interestingly enough now I've got this one open you can see in there it's actually bone dry in there so that would suggest we've got a heater core issue. There's also, I've noticed, I don't know if you can see it, it's a little valve in the line of the inlet. You can see it there. So that could be clogged too. So we'll see what happens with that. But for now, we're going to just start flowing some water through there lightly in both directions and see if we get any flow at all. And I happen to have the perfect size hose to stick inside them. So I'm going to capture the water that comes out flushes the heater core and see if anything comes out. The more information we can get, the better. And hopefully we might have some stuff come out with this, which will give us some insight as to what's going on inside the cooling system.
So as you saw at the beginning of that, there was a bit of crud in there. Not a huge amount of solids though. I'd hoped for more, but it's definitely still cruddy. And so the cooling system definitely still needs flushing. I mean, that's just the heater core there. So it tells us a lot about what's going on. Uh, I'm gonna do that a few more times. You don't need to watch that and then we'll move on. So that's the end of the day now. We've been driving around for a while without the thermostat in there. We've done all the back flushing of the heater core and flushed the cooling system as much as we can. It's definitely a lot better than it was. The water's a lot cleaner. Wouldn't say it's perfect, but uh, we are getting better performance out of the cooling system. It didn't overheat whilst we've been driving it. It did bump up maybe one little bar on the uh, coolant temperature gauge on the dash, but nothing too bad. And also it doesn't have the thermostat in there, so it's not gonna be performing correctly the way it is. Uh, so I'm being impatient. I could keep flushing it and that heater core probably needs some more back flushing because we did get heat out of the heater, but it's not perfect yet. Definitely needs some more attention there. But I'm going to quickly throw the thermostat back in now and just see if we've made any progress because we're not going to know until we send the conditions back to the way they were when it was overheating. So we'll do that quickly and then hopefully go for a quick drive and see if we've made a difference. Well team, we've been driving for about 20 minutes now. And it's pretty much just stayed right there in the uh, correct temperature spot on the gauge. It did bump up one bar uh, three times and then dropped back down within about 10 or 15 seconds. But we're now on a road here that has a hill in a minute and it was this hill coming up that uh, caused issues for it when we first got it. Twice we came up this road and twice we got all the way up to high. I stopped it short of going into the red, but it definitely did not cope with this upcoming hill. So we shall see what happens. Here's our hill. It's just a long, slow, 80 kilometer hour, 50 mile per hour hill. I'm just gonna haul up it. You can see it causes the car to drop down a gear, run in a higher rev range. Let's see what the temperature gauge does. That's the one bar we were getting before. Now see if it drops back down quickly. Oh, there's two. Back to one. So it still doesn't like that hill. It hasn't gotten as hot as it did previously. Oop, there we go, up to three. The interesting thing when we come out here is the radiator is cold here. It's cold almost all the way across, it's only hot right there. Wondering if we maybe got a bunch of air in the radiator again. I don't know. The engine itself is not ridiculously hot either. You don't open it. There's no smell, it's not particularly hot. And whatever it is, it doesn't feel like it's actually cooking itself, it's just getting warm. Alright, so it's cooled down enough here that I can slowly undo this radiator cap. There's still pressure in the system. I think we've got a lot of air, and we do. We have a lot of air in the system, and you can see it coming out of the cap quickly as I release the pressure. There we go. So we're just gonna let the pressure bleed off. Now if this keeps happening, then we've got a blown head gasket. Now that we've bled that air pressure off, the radiator's hot again, so we've definitely got coolant all the way across the top now. It's very, very hot. So there was definitely a chunk of air in the top of the radiator there. So not really a good sign at this stage. So where are we at with this? Well, it just had a bunch of air in the system after a half hour drive and the long haul up that hill that seems to sort it out. Uh, and normally a bunch of air in the system is bad news. That would suggest air is getting into the system 
and the only way an air, air can get into the cooling system under pressure is from the cylinders so that's a bad head gasket well here we are back with the subaru again it's now weeks if not months later we've been driving this car on and off for a while and it is drivable if you uh, throw the ac on so the auxiliary fans are always on then uh it's completely drivable around town it does every now and then bump up a little bit on the temperature but it doesn't get overly hot uh, but there is still something not quite right and we are getting excessive gas in the cooling system so it's either the coolant is boiling somewhere uh, which it could be because it's only got water in the system right now uh, and it's maybe getting a little bit hot could be the radiator or something like that or we do have a slightly blown head gasket so the reason it's been a while is I have been waiting for this. This is a very simple little combustion gas test kit. You can buy bigger, more complicated kits anywhere all the time, but they're in the hundreds of dollars. Uh, this little test kit is like 20 bucks online, but the only place I could find it was somewhere in Europe. So I had to wait for this to get shipped out. Uh, but this hopefully will give us some kind of confirmation uh, that I think it's the head gasket. And if that's the case, then at least we know what we're dealing with. But let's see what this test does, and then we'll go from there. All right, so we're up to full operating temperature now. And you can see in there, the bubbles. So you can see those little bubbles forming now. What we want to know, is that water vapor or is that the gas? So I couldn't get enough flow for the test through the overflow bottle, so we're going to go straight onto where the radiator cap would go. Let's see what happens. There we go. We flow through. And there we go, it's changed colour. So as we can see, we've got carbon dioxide in the coolant and the only place that can come from is the exhaust uh, is the combustion gas and that means we have a bad head gasket well there we go after all that fuffing around a simple two minute test with the right equipment has diagnosed the problem for us and we're pretty confident now that the head gasket has failed on this vehicle it shows that it's uh, worth investing the money in the right equipment uh, although I'm glad we did do all the back flushing and stuff because we do know now that uh, that stop leak that someone's put in has caused some issues too and I wouldn't be surprised if down the road we have to replace uh, at least the heater core and potentially even the radiator but hopefully uh, getting the head gasket fi fixed and a bit more of a back flush and all that kind of stuff will be able to make this a going concern. So that's not a job that I will take on myself. I don't have the time and I'm not a mechanic so we'll leave that one to the professionals and luckily we're in this car cheap enough that it'll absorb the cost of a head gasket job. So that's about it on this one. We're gonna keep driving it as it is until we can get it off to the mechanics. We'll get it fixed up and then I will report in another day once we know where we are. Thanks for playing along, we'll catch you on the next one.